those who gathered here in Portsmouth would never forget the site. It was by far the largest military fleet the world has ever known. Yet all knew that both victory and failure were possible, and none could know their fate. Aircrew flying overhead, sailors manning warships, or troops in assault craft battering their way through the stormy swell to the shore, whether dropping by parachute, landing in a wooden glider, or taking that terrible leap of faith onto the beaches. All must have questioned whether they would survive and how they would respond. The poet Keith Douglas, who was killed in action, at this remove, eight decades later, it is a near impossible task to imagine the emotion of that day. The pride of being part of so great an enterprise. The anxiety of in some way not coming up to scratch. And the fear of that day being their last. The stories of courage, resilience, and solidarity, which we have heard today and throughout our lives, cannot fail to move us, to inspire us, and to remind us of what we owe to that great wartime generation. It is our privilege to hear their testimony, but our role is not purely passive. It is our duty to ensure that we and future generations do not forget their service and their sacrifice in replacing tyranny with freedom. Our rights and the liberty won at such terrible cost bring with them responsibilities to others in the exercise of that liberty. The 1944 Victoria Cross Roll of Honor include Sikh, Muslim, and Hindu soldiers. A reminder that events that year shaped our world then and the society we share today. Let us once again commit ourselves always to remember, cherish, and honor those who served that day and to live up to the freedom they died for by balancing rights with civic responsibilities to our country. For we are all eternally in their debt. I am deeply honored to join you today to recognize the bravery of all of those, like John Haddock, who participated in the D-Day landings, the start of the liberation of France and Europe that led to victory of the Allied powers. Our guests of honor today are those veterans from the Normandy landing that came from across our nation and from all walks of life to join in the fight against tyranny. Many of those that took up arms had never seen combat before, some were still only in their teens. This is an extract from a letter by Captain Alistair Bannerman. Too many never returned. They remain in some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. We will always remember those who served and those who waved them off. The mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, who watched their loved ones go into battle, unsure if they would ever return. Today, we remember the bravery of those who crossed the sea to liberate Europe, those who ensured that Operation Overlord was a success, and those who waited for their safe return. <laughs>